Part 4 of this problem probably doesn't benefit too much from video, so I've just put up here the problem and its solution. The question asks us, if you have a bag of marbles and the total weight of the bag is at most 1 and each marble weighs at least 2 to the negative n times h of p plus epsilon, what can you conclude about the number of marbles in the bag? Well, this is phrased in a way which makes it look like a very complicated question, but it's actually a very simple question, a third grade level question. The point is, if the bag weighs at most, blah, 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 and each marble in it weighs at least, blah, 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 then we have a very strong constraint on the number of marbles. If the bag weighs at most W, and each marble weighs at least, I probably shouldn't have picked W because they both are weights, but each marble weighs at least M, well, then there can be, at most, W over M, many marbles, right? The total weight of the bag is going to be the sum of the individual weights of each marble. If there's more than W over M, many marbles, each weighing M, then the total weight will be above W. So, if the, wag, if the bag weighs at most 1, and there's 2 to the negative N times H of P plus epsilon, as the minimum weight for each marble, then the number of marbles in the bag is at most 1 over 2 to the negative n h of p plus epsilon. In other words, 2 to the n times h of p plus epsilon is our upper limit on the number of marbles in the bag. The point of this question being that it will connect with what we've done previously involving that particular quantity. A connection we'll see in part 5.